We're going to read once again Psalm 24. Every word is powerful and as revelation which is new, every word of God speaks to all of humanity, each and every one, each and every day, all through the years. Therefore, let us read once again Psalm chapter 20 from verse 1 to the end of the chapter. Let's all start up reading of God's word this morning. Psalm chapter 20 from verse 1. All together, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice, Shela. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They have bowed down and fallen. But we have risen and stand upright. Save Lord. May the king answer us when we call. You may be seated. You want to clap your hands unto God this morning and praise him. Starting everything with the praise is very wonderful and essential and needed. Last week we saw about how you just give two according to the psalm. All your offerings that you give unto God and your burnt sacrifice, that which you give unto God, everything, your tithes and offerings, your service, your time, your praise, your worship, all that you do for God in the house of God, right from the setup to the things that are done through the week, all of that falls under the category of external service unto God. But there is an internal service that needs to take place, and that is a burnt offering. Many would get into the habit of doing things for God because we like to do stuff, we like to get occupied and be occupied and get to do things that we might enjoy. A musician might enjoy playing a musical instrument and they can play it for God. A guitar or a keyboard or a drums and that's like the offering that is given unto him. But not just something that is external that should be done. But we should do something that is internal. That is a burnt offering. Your being, your body, your mind, from your spirit. You've got to praise God. You've got to surrender yourself and you... Offer yourself in a sacrifice and service unto God. And that honors and that touches and blesses God. Not just doing work for God. Not just volunteering. Because sometimes we can get caught up in just doing things because we like it. But deep inside, there might not be true love. Deep inside, there might not be devotion and dedication. Just doing it week after week. Though it is good, but still you've got to ensure that you always have love for God and that your service which is external, your offering which is external should come because you have love inside. That's what this psalm emphasizes about. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. And the most important thing that they're saying is they're talking to someone who's already spent years serving God with their offerings. They spent years offering themselves deep inside, completely surrendered to God as a burnt offering. And now they're saying, for all the service they've done for years, may God remember you now. And remember you at the time that is needed. Your service is not just for that moment, for that hour, but we are now in the period which Israel just celebrated in October 2nd, Rosh Hashanah, the new year. That they celebrated it starts on that time and it ends on October 4th every year according to the lunar calendar. It changes and after 10 days, the 10 days of all. And then Yom Kippur. And through this time is a festival of trumpets that takes place. And in this time, there is a day of atonement. All this you can read about in the Old Testament the book of Leviticus chapter 23. There isn't time to look at it. Maybe one day we will. But what they're saying is at this time, the entire nation spends time in the presence of God. These are called the high holy days. Nearly 10 days they spend time with God on the day of atonement. According to the word of God, they're supposed to afflict themselves. They're supposed to fast and not eat anything sweet, anything good. 
they're not supposed to enjoy anything or do anything that will make them have a good time but the 24 hour period they're supposed to look unto God and ask God and seek God's forgiveness because Rosh Hashanah is a new year it's a year that started everything they believe that Adam and Eve was created on that day this year it fell on October 2nd and it is a celebration that is happening on that day and that is the beginning and at that time books are opened by God who created the world he comes and he wants to look into the accounts of the nation look into the account of everyone all the Israelites that's why at that time they spent time in the day of atonement according to God's direction and they afflict themselves saying God forgive me if I've done anything wrong in the last year and they remember and they definitely if they had done something wrong they ask and seek God's forgiveness and they show God that they truly are repentant not just lightly saying I'm sorry and then walking off that would be very easy but they spent time going through all that they've done why because God would bless them at that time that is the time God makes the decision on the day of atonement he takes a book he takes everyone's book and sees all that they've done in their life and God does an account of them this truly is what happens in the nation of Israel and it happens to all of us because he's going to change after that period he's going to increase he's going to take from one level of glory to the next he's going to open new avenues he's going to open new doors oh after this period amazing things will happen even in my life I can see the change that took place right after October November something awesome is going to take place even in your life it will happen you got to realize and know what God does and how he operates and functions and that is why here they are saying knowing that for all the service that these people have done may he remember at that time when he looks and puts his eye on you to see how you lived in the past year what he's supposed to do if you've done evil to give judgment and justice to the ones you've done evil to if you've done good to reward you for that at that time what have you done in the last one year if we are celebrating Rosh Hashanah and we are at the time of the Yom Kippur what have you done in the last one year you got to know that these are the specific things you will have to write it down note it down put it in an excel sheet if you work in an organization before your appraisal you'll have to go and say this these are the projects these are the tasks that were given to me and this is how I did it each and every day here is the spreadsheet of my work can we do the same unto God if he wants something supernatural and incredible marvelous to take place then you got to go and give him and tell him that Lord I did this for you in this last year I've increased I've changed these things I'm more committed I'm more dedicated I love you more I understand more I spend more time I'm doing more for you and therefore you can say God now I want you to bless me that's what they're saying here. May he remember all your offerings that you've done. And may he accept your burnt sacrifices. There are five prayers that they do on Yom Kippur. Throughout the day, they're there in the synagogue, praying step by step, stage by stage. And then they are ready to receive from God. And there is a celebration. They have a breakthrough at that time. We're going to see seven instances in which, because of the service that they did unto God, God remembered. Look at the person next to you, behind you, in front of you and say, God will remember you for your service. Tell them, serve God. Your service will be noted down. And he will reward you. And if there's anyone who's not served, saying, start serving God now. Tell them, start serving God now. Don't lose a day. The entire nation of Israel was created for serving God. Many Christians do not understand that. They think Christianity and being a Christian is just being connected to a church, having a church membership, go when you're available, possible, maybe Christmas, New Year and Easter, and that's about it. And some might push themselves to come on Sundays or me a little bit more involved, but that's not what it is. You got to accept that you are a priest of the Most High God and that you're called to serve God says, the book of Isaiah chapter 44 verse 21, Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for you are my servant. 
I have formed you. You are my servant, O Israel. You will not be forgotten by me. I have blotted out like a thick cloud your transgressions and like a cloud your sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Sing, O heavens, for the Lord alone has done it. Shout, you lower parts of the earth, break forth into singing, you mountains of forest and every tree in it. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Each and every one of you have been called out of darkness into light to serve God as a priest of the Most High God. And he has blotted out all your transgressions, your sins. That is why in that day of atonement, they seek God and you need to have this as a system in your life. Not just let the days pass by, years pass by. That should be a progress. Day by day, week by week. A week by week progress is completely important and very real for every Christian because that is how God has set it up about the days, the day of the Lord that happens on the first day of the week. Therefore, there should be a progress compared to last Sunday. What was the progress this Sunday? What will be the progress next Sunday spiritually first? If you're not going to look at that and if you're not going to desire that, if you're not going to work towards that, it'll just go by. Weeks will go by, months will go by, years will go by and you have not done anything for the Lord. The devil will come and steal the time. And now we are living in the time of intense distraction, intense attraction. Just one smartphone is enough to get people occupied and spend hours together. And after having it in their hands for a few hours, you ask them what you did. They just went here and there, looked at this, looked at that, got agitated, got anxious, got angry, got upset, and then got a headache. And at least after that, will they throw it down and then run into the presence of God? Are they going to again still pick it up in addiction and keep scrolling and keep clicking, not being able to leave it down, being anxious? Without looking at it, without touching it. We've got to break free from those things and we've got to spend time. And you've got to set up a system where every week you can say, this week, this is what I did for Jesus. Just think about this last week. What have you done for the Lord in your life for Him? Something that you can write it down. Can you tell this morning, this is what I did for Jesus Christ in this last week? Don't say I prayed. Prayer is for you. There are different kinds of prayer. Did you pray for the nations? How many hours you spent? Did you pray for the lost? Did you exalt the Lord not just for yourself but for a transformation in this city and this nation? What have you done? If you've not done anything, then you've got to assign and you've got to note down and you've got to look at what are the things that I can do for God. I need to do something on a weekly basis otherwise time will fly by. And then... When the day of atonement comes at Yom Kippur, when God looks at our books, it'll be empty. What has this sister done for me? What has this brother done for me? I did this for them. I died on the cross. How grateful are they? Then how can we receive? How can we go and progress and go higher? The first thing I want to see when God remembers is that God's love for your service in love he gives his love. Jeremiah chapter 2, it tells about how God looks at this nation which followed him. But now they've gone astray. They left God. And now he's telling to Jeremiah in chapter 2 was to go and cry in the hearing of Jerusalem to all the people of that city. Thus says the Lord, I remember you, the kindness of your youth, the love of your Betrothal, when you went after me in the wilderness in a land not sown, Israel was holiness to the Lord, the first fruits of his increase. That's how they were unto God. They followed him and God knew that they loved him and they're faithful in that. And when they touched the heart of God in service, because right after they left Egypt, God gave Moses 
the tabernacle vision and he came and he set up the tabernacle he set up the priests and the levites and they started serving god in that wilderness each and every day with their offerings and their burnt sacrifices and the nations of the world knew that god was the reason that they were prospering god was the reason that they were having victory and in the center of the camp was the tabernacle of god god was the center of it all when i say all the serving god week by week you got to see many christians meet might look at me like what already i don't have enough time even coming to services like doing god a big favor but you got to understand that god is not just an accessory in the church god is the center of it all he is the center of our life he is the center of the church he is right there in the center he is everything he is all if you don't have him as everything if you don't have him as all you will not be able to make it into heaven those of you cannot get up and come on a friday morning or cannot come to a sunday morning on a regular basis when the rapture happens i really have doubt about whether you'll be able to make it maybe you'll have another week of looking at how to have zeal for god is there that fervent zeal saying i've got to be there i will love god no those that are those i know in church who cannot miss it they have to be there they will be here no matter what their whole life is revolving around serving god they left careers and jobs so they can take up a career and a job which allowed them to serve god on friday will allow them to serve god on a sunday some of them have not had a job for months because they quit their job so that they'll be able to serve and be there for the service they have christ in the center and when god looks at their books and when jesus comes in clouds and stands in glory and shouts after the dead rises up then those people will definitely be caught up with the lord in the air in the twinkling in a moment of an eye because they're true and faithful to him because they have that fervency they're saying nothing will get in between me and my god they have that thought they have that fire they have that zeal no one will get between me and my god no one will stop me nothing will stop me from serving god you got to come to that state and because they love god and followed him though they are not backsliding he's telling all that devour him will offend disaster will come upon them says the lord in jeremiah chapter 2 verse 3 and 4 he says hear the word of the lord of house of jacob and all the families of the house of israel his protection is still upon them because he remembers what they did hundreds of years ago how they served god in the wilderness between egypt and canna those years the service that they offered unto god god remembers that's why i say i remember you and god's love is still there for them that his protection is still there this is the very last end of that protection before it is going to be taken off and babylon will come nebuchadnezzar will come and he will set up a siege mount all around jerusalem break down the walls break the temple burn it down take all the articles gold and silver back into his own country and jerusalem and the temple will cease to be no more because they disobeyed god but till that point for years for generation after generation his protection was upon them that's why he's saying all that devour him will offend disaster will come upon them when you serve god you get protection supernatural protection that's why you need to serve god not just at that moment saying oh god save me protect me daniel didn't have to pray a single prayer the bible doesn't say that daniel as he was thrown into the lion down lions then he cried saying god save me no he had served god morning afternoon night three times a day he opened the windows and prayed year after year decade after decade that when the enemies plotted against him they all failed and they were all instead thrown themselves into the lions den this promise this word will come true in your life all that devour you will offend god will get the rage and the wrath of god 
and disaster will come upon those who try to devour you because of the years of service that you've done unto God or the things that you've done for him week after week. When you stood up for God in service, God will stand up for you in protection. Amen. Therefore, serve God. Shout out and say, everybody, serve God. You will make history when you serve God. After the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the upper room, God now wants the entire world to receive that same baptism. The entire world to be filled with His power, filled with His presence and His glory. And He's looking for someone to be the first one to receive that Holy Spirit baptism. And in all the earth, in all the nations of the world, there was one man who stood out unto God when he looked for that. Who can I choose to be the one who will make history for the Gentiles? History by receiving the supernatural power of God, the overpowering, the power that rests upon for a miracle to take place. And he found Cornelius in Caesarea in Acts chapter 10. The description God tells about him is a devout man. A one who feared God with all his household and gave arms generously, not out of compulsion, not out of necessity, to the people and prayed to God always. God was not just a hobby for him. God was the center of his life. And even as he's there, in the ninth hour of the day, he saw in a vision an angel of God coming in and saying to him, Cornelius, and so now he's been prepared to receive that supernatural power and the direction is given to him that even Apostle Peter himself is going to come and he's going to preach and then through that he's going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit that God could not even wait. That he poured out even before they were baptized in water. Why? Because Acts chapter 10 verse 31 it says, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your arms are remembered in the sight of God. What you give God an offering, what you give God in service as a burnt sacrifice, God will remember. He was doing it year after year and now he was chosen, he made history among all the Roman centurions that were there, among all the, even the big generals and all the other Leaders in the army, this one centurion, his name we know because of the service he did unto God, because of what he gave. It was a memorial. That's what the angel came and told him. That's what the word of God reveals. Your prayers and your arms have come up for a memorial before God. It is built up like the Taj Mahal. The door. The man who built it is no more. It's hundreds of years, hundreds of years. People who come to India, they want to go there, all the heads of nations. They want to go there and take a photo and they want to tell, yes, I've gone to India. Yes, I've gone to the Taj Mahal. It is a memorial that was built and that is there that is protected, that is remembered, that speaks to many people. Your memorial, your service, you should have built in heaven, a memorial for God with your giving and your service. That as he's moving and walking in heaven, God suddenly sees a massive monument erected in his name. That he asks the angels and he opens the book, says, who's this who built this magnificent structure? And they say, this is that person who's there in that church. This brother, this sister, they served you faithfully week after week, day after day. This is their offering. This is their burnt sacrifice that they've given unto you. Immediately God will be touched. And he will send his angel. Into your life and he will choose you. He will make history. How can I make history? If that's the question you're asking. Many want to make history. This is the secret. This is the way. Serving God. Oh shout out. Tell the person next to you, behind you, in front of you saying serve God. And make history. True history. 
people who make history in this world by doing material things and things in the political field and sports arena and other places, they will be soon forgotten. 20 years ago, who was the one who got the gold medal for the 100 meter sprint? 40 years ago, just 40 years ago, who was the one who got the most number of medals in the Olympics? Do you know their name? No. And one day, thousand years from now, will you remember anything? And a few hundred years after the thousand year, when the earth and this heaven is no more, will their names be remembered? No, their names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. The rich man and Lazarus speak to us. The beggar's name is known, but the rich man who moved the nation, the city, he was known for, by all, lived in that palace, ate well, but now we don't even know his name. No one is going to keep his name or give that name for his, their children. But Lazarus, many people have that name in this world. The third thing is, you'll be given a gift for your service. Hannah goes year after year and serves God. In the book of First Samuel, you can see chapter 1, verse 3. That as a family, she and her husband went from his city yearly. They made a journey, a pilgrimage yearly to worship and sacrifice to the God of hosts in Shiloh. And she prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. She went year after year and she even went a step further, made a vow to God saying, Oh Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look upon my affliction and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. Not only is she serving, not only is the family serving, but she's saying, God, you do this miracle for me, that which is impossible and I'll give you the son and he will serve you. She's setting up future service. And that touched the heart of God because the nation needed a prophet. The tabernacle needed a priest. She knew what was needed and she was able to give it. And so God gave her the gift. The thing that she wanted. That's why 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 19 it says, The Lord remembered her. She went home finished her service, finished her offering, finished her sacrifice. But even as she went home, it says in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 19, the Lord remembered her and in the, it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, because I have asked for him from the Lord. The fourth thing that you'll receive is promised land for your service. Abraham, the servant of God, served God faithfully. Even before you get just one son, 25 years was spent in service, in following God and obeying the voice of God. When God had told him, leave your country, leave your family, leave this place, your relatives, and come to the place that I will show you. He left and he followed, walking the length and breadth for every place that his foot was placed on would become the nation of Israel. That was his service and what God told me faithfully fulfilled. That's why Leviticus chapter 26 verse 45 says, For their sake I will remember the covenant of their ancestors whom I brought out of the land of Egypt. Because Abraham served God remembered that though they were in bondage in Egypt, why were they brought out of the land of Egypt? Because God remembered his word to Abraham, remembered the service of Abraham because his servant Abraham walked the length and breadth. The fifth is you'll receive life for your service. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 21 it says, If a wicked man turns from all his sins which he has committed, keeps all my statutes and does what is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. None of the transgressions which he has committed shall be remembered against him because of the righteousness which he has done. He will live. When you serve God by making that decision to live for him, not only will he remember the good things, he will forget the bad things. It will not come up unto God saying, this person did that because now they're changed. Now they're transformed. 
There is no more curse. If you've accepted Jesus Christ, shout out and say, I've accepted Jesus Christ. Therefore, I have no curse. Hallelujah. The sixth thing, you will be saved from destruction for the service. It says, in Genesis chapter 9, verse 15, I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. The water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. That's what happened after the flood of Noah. Because God at every time remembers the covenant he made with him. And there'll be no more destruction with the flood on all the earth. Because of the covenant and house, Noah lived a clean, pure life unto God and served God in building that ark. That ark that God told him to build was an act of service unto God, was an act of offering unto God. The seventh and the final thing is even that criminal on the cross, because he spoke good things about God, the evil that he had done was not remembered. When the other criminal on the other side blasphemed God, blasphemed Jesus Christ and said, if you are Christ, save yourself and us. Immediately, this criminal hanging saying, do you not even fear God? So now he's acknowledged that he is God. Seeing you are under the same condemnation, he recognizes that they are receiving condemnation because of the evil that they've done. And we indeed justly for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. In that few hours, hardly just one or two, he is able to see. Maybe he's seen Jesus for the very first time, but he is able to feel and know and look at Jesus and realize that here is a sinless God who's hanging for the sins of the world, that he is the Lord. There is a revelation that takes place because his heart is open, his mind is open, hanging on that cross next to Jesus Christ. He tells Jesus, Lord, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, what an incredible man he is. Many will call him as a criminal, but he has such deep revelation, not about just the past, not just about the present, but about the future. That even this religious dead leaders there would not believe in resurrection. But he now believes, saying, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. And Jesus gave him that assurance, paradise for the service that he did. Just that few minutes of service on the cross, when everyone all around were mocking Jesus Christ, everyone all around were blaspheming him. Here is this one man, when the apostles had forgotten and ran away, when the other disciples and followers are not there to give him water to drink or take care of Jesus Christ, here is this one man who touched the heart of God. Here is this one man who served Jesus Christ hanging on the cross and he said, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Oh, let's all stand up this morning. Your words make a difference. That's why you're given an opportunity to serve God at every service. Now is the time for you to open your mouth and tell him, tell Jesus Christ. Not just a song that is sing that has to be parroted. Not just the words that are told to you to tell but you need to let it come out of your heart like this criminal hanging on the cross realizing analyzing having a revelation and then speaking to the Lord saying oh God you're God creator of all the earth you've done marvelous things in my life that is why testifying is important and giving God glory is important for the things he's done but that unlocks the supernatural for you to receive more and you will receive even more when you testify and when you witness unto God. When you exalt God, oh, even this morning, there's anyone who's decided I'm going to serve God week by week. I will do something for Him. That'll be tangible. That'll be something that I can write down saying these are the things I've done week by week, day by day unto God. Close your eyes and make that decision at this moment. And if you've decided, lift up your hands and say, oh Lord, here I am. I want to do something for you on a weekly basis. I want to build up a monument in heaven with my offering, with my burnt offering, with my burnt sacrifice. That you remember me when you open the books on the days of remembrance, on the high holy days. 
that you lift up that you will give life that you give protection that you will give paradise that you will give a history making ability oh god oh even as each and every one has lifted up their hands oh father god give them into your hands lord jesus holy spirit of god give them into your hands pray that you lead and guide make it possible show them the way speak to them pray that oh lord they will receive and pray even now for those who have served in the last year oh pray that they'll give their oh get their reward oh lord at this time remember May the Lord remember each and every one of you for your service. I give this blessing and pronounce this blessing upon you once again this morning from Psalm chapter 20. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of God of Jacob defend you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and strengthen you out of Zion. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose i will rejoice in your salvation may the lord save you and may he answer you bless you in the name of the father son and the holy spirit in jesus wonderful mighty name give all the glory honor and praise under awesome god this morning clap your hands god bless you